Welcome to the House of Ham. I'm Bob, WV7W, and today we're going to build the QRP Guys NFED Half Wave Antenna Kit. This may not be the smallest kit out there. The K6 ARK NFED Half Wave that I recently did a video on is considerably smaller and lighter, but the QRP Guys antenna does handle more power. It's rated for up to 20 watts, as opposed to the K6 ARK, which can only handle 10 watts. This makes sense due to the larger ferrite core and heavier gauge wire. This kit is also easier to build due to larger parts. So, if the K6ARK kit is a bit too small for your kit building comfort level, the QRP Guys kit may be for you. Let's go to the bench, put this guy together. So, let's take a look inside the bag of this kit here. So, first thing we have is the PCB, which is also the antenna wire winder. We have a couple of wire ties to hold the toroid down to the PCB. The BNC connector. We have our 22 gauge magnet wire. And our toroid. And we have our 150 picofarad capacitor. And finally, we have the hardware to attach the antenna wire. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to mount the 150 picofarad capacitor into the C1 position. You'll notice I've sped up the video during most of these build processes. Uh, no use boring you to tears watching every step take the full amount of time. Some of these steps, like uh, particularly toroid winding, is kind of like watching paint dry. Next we'll solder on the BNC connector. Um, I solder the two little pins in the back first. Um, that way you can make sure that it's flushed down to the board before soldering the two larger pins. Once you solder those larger pins, it will be really hard to try and get that, um, you know, flattened down to the board. I also put a little flux on there just to get a good solder connection. So next is the antenna mounting hardware. So you can see you've got the uh, wing nut and the and the screw, and uh, you can just kind of follow the diagram as the best way to, to do this. And you just want to make sure that the screw is flush with the bottom. And next is everybody's favorite winding, the toroids. And you start with uh, scraping off the enamel on this one because of the heavier gauge wire and particularly um, on the part where you've got the twist it's going to be really hard to solder it so they, in the instructions they recommend you scrape this off first so if you just follow the uh, measurements um, and scrape the enamel off uh, as as uh, the directions show you it shouldn't be too bad and it will make soldering it a whole lot easier and trying to burn it off after the fact um, it does make a little bit of a mess though And once you uh, get all the enamel off, next thing is to fold it. And there again, following the directions, um, I went ahead and crimped it down pretty good so it's a nice uh, flat area at the tip. And then you do the twist just as they describe. And so once you get the twist, you twist it all the way down till you get down to that last little half inch of scraped wire on the loose end there. Once you do that, then we start winding the toroid. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to wind our three primary windings uh, with the twisted wire. And so this is different from some of the other um, toroids that I've done because this is a 64 to one as opposed to a 49 to one. So it has three primaries and 24 total windings, which give you a 64 to one. Um, uh, ratio on this transformer as opposed to the 49 to ones that are more common in fed half waves. So we'll just go ahead and uh, 
and just wind them. Uh, once you get to the um, 12th turn through, then you're going to do the crossover and then you'll do the final 11 turns to finish out the toroid. So it's not, uh, it's not a terribly difficult one to wind because it is larger. Um, but uh, the, the wire is also a little thicker. So what I do is I kind of press and make sure that uh, before I pull it through that the um, part that goes up against the, the edge of the toroid is pressed flat against it. So now we'll go ahead and do our crossover. And then we've got the remaining 11 turns to get this thing finished out. It's pretty important to make sure that you're counting your windings accurately. Um, having the right number of turns is critical to having the right ratio. Without the right ratio, your impedance is going to be off. Um, and, you know, you can do the math uh, to, to figure out what it would do to your impedance, but uh, even one turn is enough to, to make a difference. So you want to make sure you've got the right number of windings and you want to double and maybe even triple check it before you go and solder it down. Um, a pretty important part in winding a toroid. That's probably the most, uh, pro besides the, you know, getting the enamel off so you get a good solder joint, the, the number two problem that people have with toroids is getting the right number of, of turns. So once you get this all done, let's go ahead and scrape off the last little bit on that, on that last uh, uh, lead that's coming out there, the long one. And then once you get that all scraped off, uh, you can go ahead and tin the wires. And once you tin the wires, then uh, you're ready to solder it down to the board. So um, you'll notice I do use a little bit of flux on here. Um, to make sure, particularly on that larger one, um, to make sure you get good uh, solder flow on there. Uh, one thing is it is hot. You can see me kind of jump there a little bit. Uh, so be careful. I might even consider holding it with something instead of your fingers like I did uh, safety first. So, but uh, yeah, get those leads all tinned and then we'll go ahead and get this thing mounted to the board. So pay close attention to where the leads go and make sure you get them in the right spots. That's pretty important. Uh, you don't want to have uh, leads not going where they belong because that will make the, the antenna not operate properly. So, and then make sure you get a good solder connection. Uh, you don't want any cold joints. Uh, the tough one is going to be that larger one. Uh, make sure that you've got both parts of the lead with good solder and there's no uh, remaining um, enamel on there that's that's uh, impinging on the uh, solder connection. So once you do that, uh, just put the wire ties on to hold it down. Be careful not to go across that uh, crossover wire and and uh, and torque on that. So make sure that you when you do those that it does not go across the crossover wire with the wire ties. And essentially now the antenna is built. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do some continuity checks just to make sure that I've got good solder connections. Now, there's kind of a problem with this in that, you know, the transformer itself is is basically, you know, a, sh a short as far as an ohm meter is concerned. Of course, to RF, it doesn't see that. So um, this doesn't mean there's not some other problem, but at least it shows that the solder joints should mostly be good. So, um, you know, if they look good, you're probably fine, but it doesn't hurt to uh, go ahead and get that last little check in as well, just to make sure that you didn't miss something. So I kind of recommend that you go ahead and do a ohm check. So I took this outside and I set it up on my tactical mini in a sloper um, fashion and I cut the wire for 20 meters. So it's basically, I cut it just a slightly long, about 29 feet, and um, it was uh, definitely too long. It was about 13.2 megahertz uh, resonant frequency. So I went ahead and cut down uh, and ended up being almost a, f a little over a foot that I had to take off before um, it was in the 20 meter band. And then um, it really wasn't what I was expecting as far as SWR. So it's not horrible. It's a minimum of 1.38 at 
and uh, less than 1.5 to 1 across the entire 20 meter band, but the impedance is almost 70 ohms. So I need to do some, re do some checking and see what that might be going on there. And I'll do a follow up video if I figure that out. So, what do I think of the QRP Guys NFIT Half Wave Kit? It's an easy build. I was a little disappointed in the best SWR I could get. I was hoping for a little better than 1.4 to 1. Most of the 49 to 1 NFID half waves I built get pretty close to 1 to 1. Now, I don't know if it has anything to do with the 64 to 1 Unon or not. And to be fair, 1.4 to 1 is still pretty good and totally usable. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button so you know when my next video comes out. Until next time, 73s.